Okay, hi grade 10s. Uh, we're going to be working today on our very last lesson in the optics unit and we get to look at lenses. So instead of mirrors where the light reflects or bounces back, we're now looking at lenses where the light can travel through and then because of the curvature of these lenses, it affects the image and it actually makes it um, either larger or smaller, and it actually can pinpoint that, low, that light to a particular focal point. So just like when we did the mirrors, there are two types of mirrors, converging and diverging. It actually is the same thing for lenses, okay? So you can have a converging lens, and just as it, uh, the name implies, it's going to converge those incident rays to a particular point. And that's going to be the focal point. So how do you identify it? Well, it's pretty easy. A converging lens is a lens that's thickest in the middle and causes incident parallel light rays, rays to converge through a particular point. Now, have a look at where that focal point is for the converging lenses. Can you see where that is? It's on, you know, the opposite side, if you will, if, of the light traveling in. Compare that to what a diverging lens looks like. And remember, again, the light rays are traveling through the substance, the medium, so you actually keep that line completely solid and you don't have to dot it if the light's actually traveling through because it's a real beam of light. So let's compare it to the diverging lens. Just as the name implies again, a diverging lens is thinnest at the middle and thickest at the ends, and it causes parallel incident rays going into that lens to diverge. Now, look at where that focal point is. Compare those two. You can see here for the converging lens, the focal point's on the opposite side of the light rays coming in, but look at where that focal point is for the diverging lens. It's behind, so it's sort of the way the incident rays are going in, they diverge, but the angle at which they diverge, if you dotted those lines and brought them back through, they converge at that point. It's the focal point, but for this type of lens, it's on the same side as the incoming incident rays. So remember that. Let's take it to the next page and we're going to do, um, I'm going to show you what those rays look like. We'll, we'll actually draw them on the sheet of paper as we would if we were in the lab. Okay, so a lens that's thickest in the middle, um, it's thinnest in the middle and causes those rays uh, to spread apart or diverge. So the lenses chapter is chapter 13 in the textbook and we're going to be just covering what's from section 13.1 and 13.2. We're not going to do any of the calculations that there are for lenses. There's a few trickier calculations but we don't have time for that today so this year all we're going to do is just look at the different types of lenses figuring out what the rays do as they meet those lenses, and then the second part of the lesson is figuring out where the object would be. So very similar to how we follow the ray rules for the mirrors, we're gonna do this sort of the same thing. So get your uh, pencils ready and your rulers ready. Um, no protractors this time, it's just looking at the rules and figuring out if it's parallel or which way it converges or diverges. Okay, all right, so the first one here, we see again, we've got our converging lens and I'm gonna show some rays going in. So in the lab, I would take the ray box and put the one with the three slits. Um, let me just grab my, my lenses here. I would put the three slits going in towards my converging lens, so pretend there's three beams of light going in, what's going to happen to them? We're going to show that if they go in parallel, they will focus through the principal axis, okay? So you've got your ruler, three beams of light going in, oh shoot, get that. Sometimes it does that if I hit it at the, the round point, in, in, and again, a third incident ray going in, and then I'm going to draw those so they're all coming right through that principal focus. Okay, there we go. And of course, this one is hitting it straight on, so it'll go straight through, and this one over here will then beam up right through that principal focus, okay? If you were in the lab, you can certainly highlight. Highlight the refracted rays. And again, listen to that term, right? 
These aren't reflected rays, they're refracted. They're the ones that got bent as they went through the converging lens. Next one, let's look at the diverging lens. So here's my acrylic diverging lens. Picture this on the sheet of paper, three rays going in and how do they diverge? Again, you can see that I have the principal focus. The principal focus is on the same side as the incident rays going in. So this is where you take your ruler now and show that beam of light from the incident ray going through the principal focus so you know which angle to hit it up at. Now, again, I'm gonna eyeball this because I don't have a ruler on my iPad, but note that it would have come right through there. So picture that as a very straight line. Let's do the middle one going in, okay? The middle one going in, it's not hitting that lens at any bent point, so it's gonna go straight through. And then another one coming in down here, picture this going in, it diverges, and again, at what angle? Line your ruler up as if it came back through the principal focus. All right, so why is a converging lens then appropriately named? Well, obviously the converging lenses bring those parallel light rays together. You'll notice that the principal focus is on the opposite side of the incident rays, whereas for a diverging lens, it's called that for a particular reason as well. It spreads those parallel light rays apart so that after they refract, it looks as if they came through a virtual focus. Okay, so you'll notice that the principal focus for the diverging lens is going to be on the same side as the incident rays. Okay, can I show you that in the textbook where that looks like, um, it looks like this diagram right here. So the really, really nice diagrams in the textbook of the converging and diverging lenses. Now, for simplicity's sake, do you see how we've got that dotted line that goes straight through the middle of the lenses? That's just to, to make our diagrams easy. So it gives you a spot at which to show the bend. What does it really look like? Well, it really looks like that actual path there where it goes in, it bends, it goes out. So let's make a shortcut on our diagrams and that's what we do in physics, okay? So do the dashed line, the center of whichever lens you've got to make your diagrams a little bit easier. Okay, so beautiful little diagram in the textbook right there for a converging lens. And you'll notice any other terminology there? Hmm, there's one other new thing, isn't there? Do you see that new label on there for the optical center? We'll add that to one of our other, um, our other uh, note, a diagram uh, that we've got. Principal axis. That's same terminology. And you'll notice one other thing on here. The same distance away from the optical center to the principal focus is what we call the secondary principal focus. And can you see that little dash at the side of the F there? That's F prime. You, I don't know if you've heard of that terminology before. It just kind of means secondary and that's the terminology that we can use for that. Can you guess what it's going to look for the diverging lens? Where's its secondary principal focus? Well, it's going to be on the opposite side, right? So that's really the only thing on that diagram that's different. So notice the difference is there. Everything else is the same. And again, when those rays go back to the principal focus, when you have a diverging lens, they're dotted. And remember, they're on the same side going in where the incident rays go in. Okay. That's it for the first part. That wasn't too bad, was it? So let's now look at how we figure out where the images are. So yeah, in today's um, lesson, there's actually one little video. I'm going to do it all together, okay? We're going to look at how you figure out where the image is when you're looking at something through a lens. So it's just like, where does the image go if I'm looking through this lens? What happens to it depending on where the object, right? Where the object is. Okay, these lens rules are on page 557 of the textbook, okay? And you can see that I've already got this diagram started a little bit here. You wouldn't have to memorize a ray rule. You're just going to use the ray rules to figure out where the image is going to be. So just like we did when we had our mirrors, we're going to use very similar principles. It's just a little bit different because we've got lenses and the light goes through. Okay, so here we go. How do you locate an image in a converging lens? Okay, first rule, 
I'm going to do this as, um, I'm going to do this one yellow, okay. Array that's parallel to the principal focus is refracted or bent through the principal focus. We showed that on the other sheet, okay. So a ray that's going in parallel to the principal axis, put a little arrow on it, it gets refracted through the principal focus, Okay, that's ray rule number one. Ray rule number two, okay. A ray through the secondary principal focus, you can picture what that would look like. A ray going through the secondary principal focus could come up or down, it doesn't matter how. So let's draw that in. If a ray goes through the secondary principal focus, it's refracted parallel to the principal axis. So you can see what that's going to look like. You're going to draw a line parallel to the principal axis going out because that's how it gets bent. Okay, third ray rule. If you have a ray going through the optical center, and that's where it is on our diagram, you see we added that label, it's going to continue straight through without being refracted. So again, show this going in any direction, however you want to show it, it doesn't matter. I'm going to show it going up because I have less things going this way. Sorry. Through, and it's going to go straight through. Okay? Rule one, rule two, rule three. Remember that your F focus is on the opposite side of the incident rays, and that is the rule for a converging lens. So here we go. Let's look at the examples to figure out. Again, you're going to take two ray rules, and where those rays meet, that's going to be the top of the object, okay? I'm gonna flip to the textbook one actually, and I'm gonna show you how that looks, and then you can give it a try on yours. These are the exact same images in, oh, where is it? These are the exact same ones that are in your note. Okay, here we go. So for the first one, if you have a ray rule going in parallel, it gets refracted through the principal focus. If you want to do the one that goes straight through the optical center, goes straight through. And if you want to do the one that goes through the secondary focus, it refracts parallel. Now again, you, can, you, can, you only need to use two ray rules to figure out where they meet. Where they meet, remember, you can see here, right, that top of the candle if you're, that's where you're starting from with your incident rays, then where they meet, that is also the top of the candle. Okay, so that's how you figure out where the image is going to be. And then we're going to describe it using salt, just like we did for when we had our mirrors. So what's the size? You could actually measure it. It's smaller. Uh, is What's the attitude? Is it inverted or upright? And you can see it's upside down, so it's inverted. Where is it located? Where's the location of it? Well, you can say the, uh, um, the image is going to be between F and 2F, just sort of a, a double distance, if you will, between the optical center and F. That was what 2F would be. And if they actually meet, and you could capture that on a screen, and there's a video where you can watch to see that. You could put like a little piece of paper there, and you can actually see the candle, and the candle is upside down on that screen. Then remember, if you can capture it on a screen, the image is real. Let's look at the second one. Look at this. If your object is at 2F, add two of the ray rules, figure out where they meet when they refract together, your image is the same size, inverted, at 2F, and it's also real. Okay, let's do the third one. Move it in. It's between 2F and F, the object. What does the image look like? Well, it's larger, inverted. What's the location? Beyond 2F, and again, it's going to be a real image. Okay, if the object was actually at F, then no image is going to be formed. Let's look at the notes because there's one on the very bottom that is a little bit different. So let me show you this one. If the candle on the bottom diagram that we've got right here is in between F and the lens, then no image is going to form, okay? Wait, if it's at F, sorry, this one, 
Oh yeah, this one is the same as the one I've got here. I was just reading the bottom sheet again. So let's do this one for the candle. We'll actually just do this one together, okay? So here we go. Let's try ray rule number one. Let's do a ray that's parallel from the top of the candle to the optical center. How does it get refracted? Through the focal point. Okay. Now let's do another rule. If it goes through the optical center, let's do that one. If the light goes through the optical center, and how am I going to draw this? I need a... Hmm. Okay. Eek. I'm a little bit off on that one, aren't I? Let me try one more time. I just want to... If you had your ruler, you're going to be a little bit better with this than me. That's a little better. No, it's still off. Do you get the idea that if it goes through the optical center, it's going to go back? Okay. Actually, that's it. That, oh, yeah. Let me try one more time. Oh, let me try one more time here, guys. There, that's better. Got the right angle this time. If it goes through the optical center, now, they don't meet in front of the lens, where are they going to meet? They're actually going to meet behind the lens. So watch this. You're then going to take those refracted rays and meet them behind. And this one would be dashed behind. <laughs> Ruler is going to be better than mine. Where do those two meet? They meet up here, and there is my candle. Okay, is it real? No. So I'm going to make sure I've got here. Let's make sure I've got dashes on this one because this is where it's actually going to be virtual. So what's my salt? It's larger, it's upright, it's on the same side as the object, and it's a virtual. Um, image because it's behind the lens and the real rays don't actually meet to make it a real image. Okay, let's move on. We have one more option. This is the same rules, okay? The only difference, right, for here is that the light rays don't actually come from F, the principal focus they only appear to. So let's add in these ray rules to our diverging lens and then you can give it a try. Here we go, a ray that's parallel to the principal axis. There it is. I was gonna put my little dot, 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 dot down the center. How does it get refracted? It gets refracted as if it came through the focal point. Primary, uh, principal focus is on the same side as the incident rays. So I'm gonna get my ruler and I'm gonna make my refracted ray as such. Okay, because it's as if it came through here. Ray rule number two, a ray that appears to pass through the secondary principal focus gets refracted parallel. Can you picture what this looks like? Set your ruler up so that is if that ray is hitting the diverging lens and going to go through the principal focus. So let's start it here. Okay, how does it get refracted? it will get refracted parallel. Last one, a ray that goes through the optical center continues straight on. So let's draw this one and just draw it right up and through. Ray rule number one, two, and three. And for this example is the in most interesting one that you get the same salt characteristics for every single image when you use a diverging lens and it looks like this. So parallel as if it goes through the primary, uh, the primary principal focus, if it goes um, as if it goes through the secondary focus, it goes parallel. They don't converge in front of the lens, they converge behind. So dot, 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 dot behind, and you end up with an image that is smaller, upright, same side as the object, and virtual. Okay, so that's it for the rules. There's some homework questions to do. And then after you learn how to do your objects and image diagrams using the ray rules, there's a 
a little virtual gizmo you can give a try um, using but don't do too much of it because it goes into doing lens equations which we don't have to cover um, and then in the second learning block uh, later today you're going to look at the human eye to see what it looks like with your eye uh, the lens inside your eye and uh, you can choose between either doing the human eye or doing something to do with a laser Okay, good luck with everything. Uh, let me know how it goes. And if you're in the lab and you want to give it a try with the ray box and the lenses, I'm happy to show, uh, show you how it works.